Mike here with Grinding Gears Garage. We're getting ready to work on our 300EX. Uh, we're doing a little video for you guys today on how to change your brake pads. Uh, we're going to be doing front and rear. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, not real complex. Uh, you don't have to brake the quad down, obviously, as far as we do. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is put the front end up on a jack stand, somewhere on the front end, and then you're going to remove uh, your left and rear left and right front tire. Uh, we use a 17 millimeter on our lug nuts. Just want to remove your wheels, get them out of the way. Uh, we're going to go over the tools and all the materials needed to do this job. We have all our tools that we need for this job laid out on our workbench. Uh, we have a C-clamp here. Uh, it's not necessarily needed, but we find it handy. Uh, we use that to retract the piston and the caliper to get access for our new pads. We have a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet uh, to remove your lug nuts. We just use an impact. If you don't have an air compressor and an impact, ratchet works great or a breaker bar if you have it. Uh, 12 millimeter to remove the caliper mounting bolts. Screwdriver to remove the uh, pad mounting bolts. And then uh, an eight millimeter. So when we bleed the brakes, we can crack the bleeder. Uh, you can use a line wrench as well. We just use a uh, box wrench. Then we have our brake pads. Uh, the 300EX uses all the same pad front and rear, which is pretty nice. Uh, we have a just a regular clear hose here for when we bleed our brakes. Uh, it's just to contain the mess so it's not spraying everywhere. I have an old beer can, soda can, soda bottle, whatever you want to use to catch the brake fluid. Uh, we either cut the top off the bottle or break the tab off so you don't mistake it for your own beer and drink it. Uh, we have aero coil. We're gonna soak any bolts down that we can't get loose. Uh, it helps eat up some of that rust. Brake clean to clean up anything. You don't wanna get oil on your new brake disc or pad. And last but not least, we have some new brake fluid. We're actually gonna flush ours entirely. Uh, it's not needed. Uh, our quad's been sitting for a very long time. So we figured we'd put some fresh fluid in it. This is DOT 5.1. It is compatible with DOT 3 and DOT 4. So it'll work on our quad just fine. You don't need a whole lot. The, the reservoirs are quite small. So once you get all your tools together, move back over to the quad and we'll start changing our brake pads. So we're gonna start with our rear brake pads. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's two bolts. Uh, they have 12 millimeter heads. There's one here on the back side. And then there's one up here on the top. They're fairly simple to get to. And they're usually not too tight. If they give you problems, the little arrow coil does the trick. Now that we have our mounting bolts out, we're going to take our caliper and swing it up out of the way. Uh, we have our hose clips off uh, for when we did the carrier bearings. You don't have to remove them to do this, but you can. They are a 10 millimeter head. Uh, we forgot to mention that earlier. But just pop those two bolts out, the clips come off, and you gain gains yourself a little bit more room to work. It's kind of nice. Uh, it's not necessary. But uh, first things first, before we go any further, you're going to take a screwdriver and bend these four tabs down. These are your pad mounting bolts. Uh, they're 12 millimeter. Uh, we used a hammer and a screwdriver just to bend them over real quick. Then you're going to take your 12 millimeter and take the bolts out. And once you get them loose, you're just going to pull your pins out. Uh, when we reassemble, we're going to take some anti-seize to put on these pins so they're lubricated. Your pads actually slide in and out on these. You want to make sure they're kind of greased up uh, so they don't bind and the pads lock up. Then your pads should just wiggle out. Ours are extremely destroyed. As you can see, there was nothing left on these pads. Surprisingly, the disc is fine. It's in decent shape, which is weird. But uh, yeah, these things were toast, as you can see. Luckily, our caliper isn't damaged at all, so we're good to put new pads back in. This is where we're going to use our C-clamp. Uh, we're going to clamp between the head of this bolt. Be very careful not to mess this bolt up. But you're going to put the other end of the clamp on the actual 
piston of your caliper and you're going to crank them in. Ours actually hasn't had fluid in it for a while, so uh, the piston's actually fully retracted. I'm just going to loosen this up. On a, if your quad has twin piston brakes, you have to use one of the old pads in there so you actually draw the pistons in together. So now that we have that done, we're going to install our new pads. So now that we have our caliper retracted all the way, our piston, we're going to take our uh, mounting pins that the pads ride on, just take a little bit of anti-seize, just going to give them a real, real light coat. You don't have to go crazy, uh, it's just pretty much to make sure the pad doesn't seize to the pin. I'm just dabbing all the excess so we don't have a ton on there. You're just going to set that off to the side and then do the same thing with the other one. So one tool we forgot in the beginning, a uh, six millimeter Allen wrench, we forgot about our, the one slider bolt, as you can see right here, is removable. So we actually loosen that up, you're able to pivot our mounting plate, which your slider is pinned to, out of the way. And you're going to take both your brake pads, uh, they're identical, no differences between the two, they're exactly the same. Take one at a time, uh, they take a little bit of work to get in there. You're going to take the mounting holes towards the back of your caliper and drop right in there. And there's also a little spring clip in the back there. You're going to notice as you go to put your slider pins in that uh, you'll get one pin in but the other one doesn't seem to want to start it's because of that spring clip in the bottom kind of holding the pads up a little bit. So. Don't forget your holder clip. When you get these all tight, you're going to actually bend the ears back up against the head of the bolt. And then this is where the spring clip comes into play. Your front one, front pad, you have to apply. As you can see here, there's quite, there's quite a bit of movement in that as you get it lined up. There's one, we take our screwdriver, apply pressure to the corner, and there is two. You're then going to take your 12 millimeter and tighten these up. So once you have your, your retaining pins in, you're going to want to bend your clips over. Uh, we're going to wait until it's fully mounted to finish that step up. You're going to take your 6 millimeter Allen wrench again, tighten in your slider. So, we actually had our mounting plate, which has your slider pins on it. Uh, we had it bound up a little bit. We were able to free it up, so the 6 millimeter isn't necessarily needed. Uh, you can swing it out of your way to get a little bit more access. Once you have your caliper and everything ready to go back on the uh, quad, you're going to make sure there's enough gap between the pads, and you should just pop right in. Uh, you're going to take your two bolts. We're actually going to apply... A little bit of never sees to these threads, so they're slightly corroded. And then lining the caliper up may be a little tough. Once you have your caliper mounted it back up on the quad, you want to make sure to install your two clips here for the parking brake and your brake line. There's two of them, and then your brake line needs to get reinstalled into a little hook here on your frame. Next, we're going to go over the bleeding process of your rear brakes. The front brakes are going to be a little bit different because there's two of them. Uh, you're going to need your 8 millimeter. Uh, you could use a line wrench. We just use a box wrench. Uh, this works best with two people, somebody to work the brake, somebody to work the bleeder in the back. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your uh, master cylinder here for your brake caliper is full. Ours is actually damaged. We need to replace it, but uh, we still go over the process. This is your master cylinder, and then this is your linkage to your foot activated rear brake. You're going to have somebody sit on the four-wheeler, and they are going to apply pressure 
to the rear brake as much pressure as they can. You're going to take your wrench and you're going to break this screw loose. Fluid is going to come out. You're going to close it and they're going to feel the pedal drop all the way down as far as it can go. And once you close it, you're going to want them to pump the pedal as much as they can until they feel a very, very firm pedal, what you want to feel. And you're going to have them do it again. You're going to crack it, close it, uh, and repeat that process until you get the firm pedal that you're, uh, you're looking for. You're going to want to install your tube at this time as well into your soda can, soda bottle, or just let it fly out of the fitting. It uh, doesn't really matter. We just try and keep it clean if we can. And then once you're done, you're going to close the bleeder valve back up and put your dust caps back on. And also check the fluid level once again as you're done to make sure you didn't drain all of the fluid out of your reservoir. So that's how to do the, bra the back brakes. We're going to move on to the front. We are at our front brakes now, working on the front caliper. It's actually set up identical to your rear minus the parking brake. Uh, before you remove your two mounting bolts, we're going to re uh, spray these caps with our PV blaster, aerocoil, whatever you prefer to use. We're going to spray these caps and then they should break free. Ours were a little tough. They're just little caps that actually cover your pad studs, which you'll need a 5mm four, 5mm Allen wrench. We forgot to cover that in our tool description. Uh, you're going to want to crack them loose before you uh, remove your mounting bolts. Ours are loosened up already. You're going to take out your two mounting bolts, one top here, one on the bottom. Uh, they're just 12 millimeter heads, that one and that one. And this should pop right off. Then you're going to continue to remove your Allen headed bolts so you can remove your pads. So then once you have your bolts threaded all the way out, you just slide them out one at a time. Oh, that one's a little tough to get my hand. There we go. Slides right off. And then our brake pads fall right out. These were actually just at the end of their life. Uh, they weren't worn totally through like our other ones. So we're just going to make sure you want to inspect everything in here, make sure you weren't destroying any part of your caliper when it was riding on the disc. And you're also going to want to make sure your the sliders right here are working as they should. It appears they are. If not, you could take them apart, spray some grease in there so they're good to go. Next, we're going to install our new pads. So we're ready to put our new brake pads in. Uh, we already compressed our piston, but do the same thing that you did on the rear. There is no bolt here on the back side, so just put one part here, the other part on your piston. Our piston cap flipped out. And just fully compress it so you can get your new pads in. Pads are the same, front, rear, like I said before, identical, no differences. Doesn't matter what order you put them in. This has a spring clip, just like the rear. So we're going to get one pin, never sees again, insert it, and one side's easy to get lined up, no problem. The other side, you have to apply some pressure due to the spring in the back. So you can, you can see there's a good amount of spring back there. Apply pressure to both of them. Insert our stud. We might have to wiggle it around a little bit, but there. Take our five millimeter again. And you're going to tighten these all the way up. Now that we have the studs tightened up, we're going to reinstall our caliper. We have to work the pads back and forth a little bit. But she pops on. You're going to take your mounting studs, mounting bolts, I should say. Line them up. We noticed our fronts are a little tough. The brake line in the front kind of fights you a little bit. It's not too bad. So once you get them lined up, tighten those two up. And then uh, 
Once you have it installed, take your five and just snug up your Allen's. Make sure they're good now that you have a nice firm base. You're going to reinstall your two caps as well. If yours are real rusty, not like ours are, just put a fine to it and never seize on there. Because you never know if you're going to be the next person to do the brakes. Makes it a little easier next time. So you're going to tighten them up, tighten your two 12 millimeters, and your new brake pads are installed on one side. You're going to take this process over to the other side of the quad, pretty much repeat it, it's identical, and then we're, after this we're going to go over the bleeding process. So for this process you're going to need a helper again. I'm utilizing my beautiful wife, camera woman slash helper. So uh, you're going to want your hose again and your empty beer bottle, beer can, uh, soda bottle, whatever you're using. Uh, you're going to hook the hose up just like this, just pops right on. You're going to have your helper apply pressure to the brake lever. And then when she's applying pressure, you're going to take your bleeder and you're going to crack it. And the lever should become soft and you're going to have your helper pump the brake lever until it feels firm. Good to go. Alright, now go ahead and squeeze it down again. And you're going to crack it one more time. Make sure your hose doesn't come off. And then have them pump it. All you're doing is making sure all the air is out of your brake line. Air will not give you a good pedal feel or uh, good brake feel at all. Uh, you just want to put your cap back on. You're then going to repeat the process for the other side after you're done doing the brakes. We're not going to show us doing the brakes on that side is exactly the same as this, pretty straightforward. Uh, once you're done bleeding, always check your brake fluid to make sure you have plenty left. Uh, you don't want to run dry, be really bad. So that's brakes on our 300EX. Thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope to see you guys soon.